So, sleep. This is arguably the most effective tool that you've got in your arsenal to make yourself feel fresher and better for the next day. However, it's also one of those things that a lot of people kind of either overlook or, or misuse it or just totally abuse their sleep patterns. The first thing you need to do is to create that safe environment that when you walk through that door, you know it's time to chill out, relax and calm down. When it is time to go to bed, make the room as dark as possible. Now, it's actually the middle of the day here, and you can see I, I use blackout blinds or blackout curtains. Perfect, making that room feel totally, completely dark. Now, when I say that, I also mean covering up any standby lights or charger lights that you've got going on on TVs or uh, on phones so that there is nothing that even subconsciously can disturb you in your sleep. The other thing to do in, in regards to creating the right environment to go to sleep is keep your bedroom cool. Probably cooler than you would have it if you were just using it as your living room. Go So that it feels when you get under those sheets that you're all nice and cosy. The next thing you need to think about is a good uh, solid sleep routine. That means going to bed at a time roughly the same time every night that will mean that you get your eight hours sleep in okay therefore if you're getting up at 10 o'clock uh, if you're getting up at six o'clock sorry in the morning ideally you need to be going to bed and that means going to sleep for 10 o'clock that probably means going to bed slightly earlier now the things you need to think about there are work social media scrolling and the dreaded netflix box set you don't need to finish that last series of that episode, of that last season of, on Netflix. It will still be there tomorrow. More importantly, that you get yourself into bed, get some good night's sleep to feel fresh, ready to attack the next day. That leads me on to the next point, screen time on phones. Blue light, the light that's emitted from mobile phones, actually stimulates parts of your brain um, that stops you creating melatonin. Melatonin is the hormone in the body that helps you go to sleep, helps your body calm down into that parasympathetic state to fall asleep. If that is that the ability, the body's ability to produce that is reduced, that means you're more awake and more alert, and it all comes from mobile phones. Research has also shown, and it, it, scientific research has shown that less exposure to blue light has meant that employees then on a scale have recorded themselves feeling less tired in work, they're actually having quicker reaction times, and then they suffer less attention lapses through the day, therefore making you more productive the following day in work. Now, this isn't something, bear in mind, that is going to be changed overnight. Pardon the pun. This is going to be something that you're going to see the gradual changes slowly but surely as you start to develop these patterns and these routines. So ideally, we want to remove the phone totally from your bedroom and also try not to look at it during the night. So removing it from the bedroom may be, may be hard because I know straight away some of you will say, well, I use that as my alarm, I use that for my alarm to get up. Ideally, with this routine, this in, within a week, a couple of weeks' time, you actually naturally start to wake up at your own, uh, your body clock will start to wake you up. But if you need to have your phone in your room, that's fine. Put it somewhere away from the bed that you can't just reach out and grab it. Turn it face down so there's nothing. And that then when the alarm goes off, you actually physically have to get out of bed to go and turn it off. Zero snoozing, okay? Also, not checking a watch during the night means that when you wake up at half past three, four o'clock and you were due to get up at six, subconsciously you then start worrying about waking up and oh, I've only got an hour left to sleep. If when you wake up out of a deep sleep and you have no idea of time, all you're going to do is roll over and get some more sleep and probably fall off to sleep a bit easier. That also means you're going to fall into a sleep, deep sleep quicker and if it is half past five and you're getting up at six, it's at least another solid half an hour's worth of sleep rather than half an hour of worrying about, am I going to wake up if I fall back off? Another th thing when we're thinking about going to sleep and getting an effective night's sleep is certain foods. Obviously, 
uh, and the effects that they have on your pattern. Now, obviously, alcohol, we know that it sends you to sleep, particularly if you have too much. However, it does reduce your ability, your body's ability to give you rapid eye movement sleep, the REM sleep. And this is the part, the proportion of your night's sleep, it's actually the most productive in helping you restore your body back to a good state to work tomorrow. Chocolate before bed contains stimulants that increase the heart rate and again is taking you away from that chilled out state that we want you in and, may, and probably will um, lead to a restless night's sleep. Caffeine, we know, is a stimulant. Great. First thing in the morning, have a coffee to feel alert and awake. However, if you have it later on in the day, it will still have that effect on your body of waking you up. And so, really, caffeine used correctly is a great tool. First thing in the morning. We want to try and avoid it probably six hours up to go into bed because then it'll be then totally flushed out of the body and your body can then start to get into its normal circadian rhythm of calming down and going to sleep. Because it has been shown coffee to disrupt that rhythm and mean your body clock never knows whether it's coming or going. Obviously, if you can't give up, if you enjoy, if there's a portion of your day that you sit down in an afternoon and get your breather from work, and that means having a brew, just maybe have a look at having some deca decaf options or even just some fruit juice. But keep that because I, I understand that those breaks in an afternoon, the chance for a little bit of socialisation, a step away from work are also majorly important. Getting towards the end now, have a notepad next to your bed. So once you're in bed and you're starting to chill out, grab your notepad and scribble down everything that's in your head. Jobs to do for the next day, uh, stresses with family, things you need to, oh, I just need to remember to do that tomorrow. I need to pick up that from the shops. Write it all down. Subconsciously, that gets it out of your head. Therefore, your body then isn't worrying about forgetting it the next day because it'll all be there, stored, safe and sound in your notebook. That's exactly the same for if you get woken up by a thought in the night. We all do it. Rolling over, tossing and turning, wake up. <gasps> I forgot to do that in work yesterday. I need to do it tomorrow. You then try and get back to sleep and all you're worrying about is forgetting that task. Scribble it down in the notepad. It's safe. It'll be there in the morning. OK, that's what often what leads to disrupt sleep. And it's that subconscious worry that's going on. So finally, once you're in bed, you've made your notes, you pull the blanket over, you've turned the lights off. Try and take some part in some deep breathing. And you'll probably find that this you won't remember finishing it. Lie flat on your back. Calm your thoughts down. Rest your hands onto your chest and just think about your breathing, focusing on your breathing. Breathe in for four seconds, hold it for two, breathe out for four seconds. Breathe in and feel your lungs fill with air and chest rise. Hold it, breathe out, feel your body relaxing and melting into the mattress. Take part in that and just keep doing that repeatedly and you'll find it's a nice, calm way to drift off to sleep. The other sections in this guide have also shown about stretching and that might be something you take part in before you get into bed to help with that chill out time. Then, good night's sleep, smashed it, wake up, get that bed made. Why? We've all seen the report of that colonel, the video of that colonel saying first thing you must do is make your bed. It works, it's so right though in what he says. One, it gets your first task of the day completed. You feel a, a slight success that I've done that job. And secondly, no matter how bad your day goes, you know, coming home, you've got a nice, calm, relaxing, clean, made bed to get into. Give those tips a try. Let me know how you get on.